Hi, it's uh, Neil Livingstone here from CFO Advisory. Uh, today I'm going to be on the online pr prosperity show with Prosper, and we're going to be talking about how a virtual CFO can help you in your business. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the virtual CE CFO himself, Neil. Neil, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing really uh, well, Prosper. How are you? Fantastic. You can tell I'm not well versed with your acronyms. CFO. Great. So if you're a coach, consultant, or to small to medium business that is building their business, congratulations. Some businesses don't go past the third year mark. But obviously, the feeling of building a business from scratch and growing your revenue um, is one satisfying thing. But with growth comes a lot more problems as well. So you usually have to, um, you know, manage your numbers, manage the way that you um, direct, you know, the success and the financial success of your business. And once you've achieved all of this success, your business will need an executive financial officer but not a lot of business are going to be able to afford um, a financial officer at this stage of growth that's why you're gonna need your own virtual CFO now obviously this is something that you might not have heard before or you are in the market for so that's the reason why I brought today Neil so he can tell us a little bit about what it is that he does and how he can actually um, be of help to your business. So let's just jump in and find out. Now, Neil, I've butched your 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 title, and I've actually even butched the actual introduction. It tells you something. I might not be well versed with what a virtual CFO actually does, and I don't think I'm the only one. Tell us a little bit about what what that entails and how you actually got started. Yeah, I'll just give you a, a, a 60 second on my background to provide some uh, context. So uh, I worked um, uh, for PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, for 10 years, both here in Australia and in Europe. Uh, and when I came back, uh, I'm from Sydney, uh, Australia, and uh, I did a number of uh, senior CFO roles. And uh, um, my parents uh, were small business owners uh, and I used to work in there. They used to run toy shops uh, and I got to my mid thirties and I, I realized I had a passion for uh, helping uh, the smaller end of town. So that's exactly what I did. I, so I've, I've taken my, um, you know, experience in working with uh, PwC and large corporates and I bring that uh, into the room uh, for business owners that are, you know, starting out and, and, and getting, up that growth curve um, and you know a, a good CFO is a pretty handy person to have in your corner for all sorts of reasons. Understandable and obviously you know when you're growing your business the more people that you have that are specialized in their roles um, you know handling the tasks the better it is. Okay now some people would be thinking I already have an accountant why a CFO? Yeah. So I usually uh, work alongside um, people's accountants or sometimes they even have bookkeepers in the business or even finance people, accountants in their business. Um, but typically they're not uh, strategic. So they don't help the owner with uh, getting clear around what their plan is and what the priorities are. And also they can't really help them solve complex problems. Um, let me give you a couple of examples. You know, there are always things coming up in any uh, growing business. You might have a uh, a negotiation that you need to uh, help with uh, with a supplier or a customer or even a member of staff. Uh, you might need some financing. You uh, you got some a cash crunch happening, or you need uh, help with uh, your collections. As I could go on and on and on, but um, typically the the accountants that are, are doing your tax or you know you're 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 sitting in your business don't have that um, gravitas uh, that can you can have a conversation with and at the end of it you're super clear uh, what what the solution is and um, also that person can uh, in many cases help you uh, you know drive drive an outcome 
Fantastic. So while I was waiting to talk to you, I just wanted to see, you know, the type of person I'll be talking to. And it tells me an in-house CFO can range between 350000 to about $450,000 in, yes. um, you know, in remuneration. Now, when it comes to a small to medium business, some, some of that can actually be the total revenue that a small business is yeah. actually, um, you know, um, receiving how does a virtual cfo then um you know translate in terms of better return of investment yeah well obviously a virtual cfo isn't in your business every day or, or full time so they really cost a fraction of that you know um it normally starts anywhere from 2000 a month uh, depends how much uh, how big you are and how much time you need uh, but yeah that's that's kind of the starting point and, you know, when I work with a client, I will typically go in there once a fortnight for um, two or three hours. But I'm also talking to the business owner and emailing and texting them and their staff and any other contacts that, 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 that needs, needs uh, I need to communicate with pretty much every day. Um, so the benefit of having a virtual CFO is you have daily access to someone with these strategic skills, um, but you're only using them uh, when you need them. Uh, and therefore, they cost a fraction of, uh, you know, what a full-time CFO costs. And the range you gave, you know, nowadays, um, good CFOs can command even more than that. Wow. I'm in the wrong business then. Obviously, I'm going to have to see what I can do to actually <laughs> enhance <laughs> my earnings there. But that's 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 actually a really good um, point that you raised there. Now, we also come across the, this same issue when it comes to dealing with different industries, uh, especially being a digital marketer as I am. People often ask me, have you ever dealt with my industry or have you ever dealt with the kind of business that I have? So being a virtual CFO, you obviously would be sitting on maybe three or four different boards or different um, you know, companies. Do you have to have intricate knowledge about the ins and outs of that industry that you're going to be working with, or is it something that um, is not of, you know, essence? Look, of course it helps um, if you know uh, a business or an industry uh, really well. You know, uh, I've worked with uh, across many industries. Um, yeah, at the moment I've, I've done a lot of work in the logistics sector and also in um, uh, the apparel sector and they all have their nuances and intricacies but when you've been a virtual CFO and a CFO for as long as I have you end up getting a lot of experience in a lot of different industries and it's amazing how often uh, they all have the same problems they all think they're special and different and and to some extent they are but I've I find it's relatively easy to get nuanced up into this the the the, the, the intricacies of a particular industry um uh, pretty quickly absolutely one of the things that you mentioned a lot on your website is clarity which is financial clarity um does that mean you are hand holding the business person or are you just giving them advice on what uh landmines not to step as they go along the journey yeah clarity is uh clarity is massive business owners um i met countless times I, I, I've come out of a meeting going, you know, that person just isn't clear on what they want to do. And it, it becomes a roadblock. Um, in fact, almost every business person experiences this. I've experienced this myself, where you have a block in your head, uh, because you're just not clear on either the, the way forward or the solution. And I see that as part of my job. When someone brings me into the business, I, I am very good at bringing out uh, for the business owner and all their teams, some clarity around what it, what can I do right now and in the next 90 days or whatever period, uh, even over the longer term, to drive value, to get the outcomes that I uh, that they that they want. And um, the, the the mindset that I try and bring is um, uh, ready fire aim instead of uh, ready aim fire. You know, so I'm 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 driving people to to action um, and and the way you do that is you get them clear 
and clar clarity drives action. Um, uh, and 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 what's it, what is the opposite of clarity? Uh, unsure, undecisiveness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it it you know it it stops action. So that's that's one of the key things that I help with. Absolutely, because if you can see clearly where you're going, obviously the um, virtual CFO will be the person that helps you see around the bends. And you'll be able to actually grow your business into something that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, there's always, um, whenever money is involved, okay, there's things like um, the cash flow management, the budgeting, the forecasting, um, and everything else to do with the sort of day-to-day -day and the future running of the business. So where would you start and end, especially when you're working with um, a business? In terms of cash flow, or just uh, generally prosper. So, so basically, it, it starts with you helping them with the budgeting. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Yes. So yes. So yeah, okay, got you. So yes, uh, the first thing I I do normally is I make sure that they have a good plan or a good budget, and if they don't, then I'll sit down with them. And this is not just a bunch of numbers in a spreadsheet. This this is a a process an iteration that you go through with uh, the team uh, that actually brings clarity to what they're doing and, it, and also brings confidence. So, you know, it might take a couple of weeks and three or four sessions to, to go through this uh, and, you, and you, you bring the team along on the journey. And at the end of the journey, hopefully what happens um, is you all sit back from the table and you go, yeah, I've tested this plan. I've tried a whole bunch of different assumptions. I'm confident in my assumptions. I'm confident in my plan. Let's get it done. Uh, so that's the first thing that I help people do. Um, and then I look at their finance team, make sure it's right sized and right skilled. Um, you know, typically it's not. Um, obviously, it needs to be affordable as well. So I help them get the best bang for their buck, so that um, once they have their plan, they don't they don't you know stray from the tracks too much without there being a, a you know a little gentle hand back back to the back to the plan. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a balancing act about getting that right resource and the right cost to make sure that you can do that. Um, and then the bonus, I guess, is when you, like you said, I think um, you hit some landmines or you see some landmines and problems come up in business, they always do. You've got the right people in your corner to really jump on it quickly and um, either avoid it or deal with it quickly. Fantastic. Now, obviously, you having a virtual sort of capacity, that means you're operating remotely. Does that entail that you need to maybe show up, um, you know, within the business once in a while, or can everything be operated remotely? Because then that um, then opens up the actual question that I have. Do you work with people that are just within your area or can you work with people from anywhere? No, it can be completely remote. Um, you know, I've got people that I work with, you know, in America and in Europe and other parts of Australia. I'm in Sydney. Um, so it, it can be completely remote. Nowadays, you know, we've all been through COVID. We know that life does go on without face-to-face -face, uh, contact. We're on Zoom right now. And there's plenty of technologies uh, that, um, you know, uh, you can deploy to, to do this uh, remotely. Having said that, if they're in Sydney, I would go and see them face to face if I had that choice. Um, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And normally, um, you know, when people engage um, a virtual CFO, are they dealing with you or do they then have to work with your team as well? Just, you know, making people um, get aware of what it looks like to start engaging with a virtual CFO. There are two of us. Um, so they'll be dealing either with me or my uh, partner, um, an Irish, an Irish guy, um, very, very friendly guy, and very, very experienced guy. So you know, they, they, they you're getting a very, very experienced CFO. Fantastic. They just got to realize not to uh, reach out or call on St. Patrick's Day, right? Because I think both of you. <laughs> well, I'm. I'm uh... I'm from Scot. I'm from Scottish uh, blood, and yeah, David's David's Irish. So yeah, we we enjoy a, a Guinness together. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what would um, be the first thing that somebody would maybe do in order to 
maybe get a hold of you or to start preparing um, if they think having a virtual um, CFO will be the right way uh, for their business or the growth of the business where they are? Yeah, so I find that um, people kind of know when they when they hear what a virtual CFO is, they, they, they pretty quickly know whether they need one and uh, can benefit from one. And typically, you've had that initial period of success and growth, uh, and and that's presented a whole bunch of new problems that you, you know, uh, you've solved the, the initial bunch of problems, you've got a whole bunch of new ones, and that's where a CFO can really come in and help them uh, get to that next stage of uh, growth and profit. Um, in terms of, you know, uh, finding me, um, they can just find me on LinkedIn and message, uh, message me there. Uh, so that's probably the best place to, to, to find me. Absolutely. And if, um, you know, people are sitting at the edge of their seats, they really want to contact you. What is the first thing that you do with them? Or do you have a program, um, you know, for people that are just adopting this idea of being a virtual, um, financial officer yeah there's there's two things that I, I typically do it depends what people's big problems are at that point um but i will either help them get their plan right but if they've got their team if their team's not right uh, which is also a very common problem when you get to that second stage of success uh i focus on helping them build a team around them you know uh, at, at, you know this prosper but yeah, you know, there is no one in the history of business that has attained a true wealth without having a solid team around them. You know, so uh, if that's the number one problem, then that's also uh, what I focus on. And I've got a ninety-day program that I put um, business owners through, it, at the end of which they will have a good team around them. Absolutely. Um, I'm also African and we've got a statement that says, if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together because you've got other people that are looking to the side, other people that are looking to the back and you can properly move forward. But if you're the only one who is looking left, right and center and you get distracted and you're not going to be able to focus, then you lack that clarity, which, um, you know, Neil just talked to us about earlier on great stuff now obviously with all this stuff you've had so much experience helping other businesses grow and building them up um in the process what's been the biggest highlight sort of in your career something that is of note that you know we might um our viewers might take away with um you know having met you today i think I think the the biggest highs in 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 my career have been when I've achieved um, an exit for somebody, um, and that's both during my time at PwC when I worked in the M and A team in in London. We we'd work on a, a client for six or eight weeks and probably do all nighters and whatnot and get the deal over the line. And it's such a high, you know, getting getting a deal done, and then. In my current business, uh, you know, working with someone sometimes for many years, and uh, finally getting it to the point where uh, they sell their business uh, for a price that they would only dream of uh, when I first met them. You know, that that's massively rewarding. Um, or, or similarly, similarly bringing on uh, a massive customer um, or doing a, a deal on the revenue side that takes their business to the next level, you know, and, and helping negotiate that and get it, get it done. They, they, they're the highest. And I've done, I've done that quite a bit. Um, uh, you know, like the many, many examples of that, but that's what I get the most kicks out of. I think, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and based on what you've told me, you know, there's no mountain you're not uh, going to climb in order for you to get, results for your clients and uh, while we were starting the call you said you're based in the blue mountains but you've also done a bit of mountain work tell us a little bit about that too i don't I, I'm, I'm a city slicker nowadays mate so uh, but i grew up in the blue mountains uh so and i did a lot of um very outdoors uh childhood i uh, did a lot of uh, canyoning climbing and uh, caving and um the venture leader, I was in Ventures, uh, he he did went to Nepal twice a year, uh, back way back then. It's a while ago now. Uh, and he took me over there when I was 15. Uh, and, you know, to, the, to this day, we went obviously up to, you know, base camp at Mount Everest and other places. And 
uh, to this day, you know, uh, it's probably one of the most amazing uh, travel experiences that uh, I've ever had. Fantastic. I mean, experiences like that always, um, you know, prepare you for the work and the life that you always lead. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this, you know, um, is something that if you're going to be growing your business, you're going to definitely need people or an extra pair of eyes that will help you, um, you know, see around the ends or around the bends in order for you to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And you've just heard uh, Neil from CFO Advisory telling us the ins and outs of, you know, what it actually entails for you to build, a, you know, a business using proven growth systems and to transform your business for profitable growth while you're running your business for profit and lifestyle. Now, Neil, I really appreciate your time on the show today. Um, you know, if somebody's just sitting there just thinking to themselves, nah, I don't think I'm going to need a CFO, what would you tell them right now? Oh, you don't have to. Um, you know, wait, a, wait, a, wait a year and then think again. So you, you'll have the same problems. Um, yeah, but no, if 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 you if you know in your heart of hearts that uh, you need someone like me, then yeah, um, get, contact me and we'll catch up, um, talk some more, and I'll see if I can help you. Absolutely. I will include all the um, links of what we spoke about in the show notes there for CFO Advisory, um, cfoadvisory.com.au. They will definitely reach your help you reach your goals, and that's guaranteed. Now, Neil, I can't thank you enough for the time that you've taken for us to record this show together. You're welcome, Prosper. Anytime. Bye for now.